Come on, lift your hands in the presence of the Lord this morning. Father, we worship you and give you praise. We bless you, God. We exalt you. In the name of Jesus, we declare your glory, your majesty upon our lives, your dominion over our lives. We are kingdom people. We have been fearfully and wonderfully made, made in your image. No matter what we feel like, no matter what it looks like, we are your sons, your daughters. And we walk in the authority and the dominion that we've been given over this earth. We begin to prophesy over our own lives. Come on, say something good about yourself. Come on, say something good about you. I say about myself, Father, that I am strong in the Lord and in the power of your might. I say over myself, Father, that I have been called for such a time as this. I say over myself, Father, that I am the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. I am the healed and I am not the sick. In the name of Jesus. Randy Steester, come up, please, if you would. In the name of Jesus, Father, we worship you and give you praise. We glorify your name. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. Oh, Father, we worship you. We welcome your presence in this place. We welcome the fullness of the Holy Spirit in this place today. In the name of Jesus. We set aside agendas, we set aside our own plans, and we declare that the move of God is more important than any message that we ever have to preach. In the name of Jesus. Come on, get vocal this morning, y'all too quiet. Come on, say something good about God. This is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. I thank you, Father, that if I had 10,000 tongues, I could not worship you enough. I couldn't praise you enough, you've been so good to me. Every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of lights, in whom is no variableness and no shadow of turning. Good, you've been good to us, God. You've been good to us, God. You've been good to us, God. Has he been good to you? Then you need to be saying that. You need to be saying that. You need to be saying that in advance of how you feel, in advance of your, your, your uh, situation that you're facing right now. You need to be saying that God is good. Speak God's goodness into next week. Can you do that? Can you speak God's goodness into this afternoon? Don't wait for the afternoon challenges to arise. Speak God's goodness into you. In the name of Jesus, we worship you. Hallelujah. Great is the Lord. Hallelujah. Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, great is the Lord. Your majesty fill this place today, Father. Your majesty fill this place today, Father. We welcome Holy Spirit in this place. Rise up and take your place upon the throne of our hearts. Sit high, God. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered this morning. God's enemies are your enemies this morning. Sickness is an enemy of God this morning. Debt is an enemy of God this morning. Weakness in our bodies, mental illness is an enemy of God this morning. Lack and poverty is an, is an enemy of God this morning. And I command you to flee by the authority of God. I submit myself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. Hallelujah. And in due time, you will exalt me, my Father. And in the meantime, I will exalt you in this place. We build a throne of your presence in this place. Come on, somebody. We build a throne of your presence in this place. We welcome the Most High God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It is in the name of Jesus that we approach the heavenly mercy seat this morning. Jesus just a little over a week ago, as it were, we celebrated your death, your burial, and your resurrection. Here we are a week later, and we find ourselves, Lord God, not wanting to just move into an old routine of, well, that's over, now what? But as the saints of old, Father, we in our hearts and command the Spirit of the living God to move strong in the midst of your people in this generation. Not waiting, God, on you, but you are waiting on us. We release, God, our praise. We release our worship. We release our minds to be captivated by you. We will not be held hostage by the plans 
the traps of the devil any longer. Generational curses be broken now in the name of Jesus. Sickness and disease, long held sicknesses in family lines be cursed at the root and die in the name of Jesus. Now, we declare it to be so. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we believe to receive when we pray. We're not waiting on anything that man could do for us, but rather we tap into the deep wells of your spirit. We come against every offensive weapon of the enemy, and we command him to retreat, to cease and desist his attack against our lives. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, you be glorified. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. presence of the Lord is in this place today. Surely his presence is in this place today. Of a certainty his presence is in this place today. Hallelujah. Come and dine. Come and dine. If any man, behold, I stand at the door and knock, saith the Lord. And if any man would open unto me, I would surely come in. And I would worship and fellowship and dine with you. My heart is not just for you on Sabbath days. My heart is not just for you on Sundays. But my heart is for you on all days. I long, long to sit with you. And speak to your heart and open your mind to the truth of who I am and who you are. So open your heart. Receive me, saith the Lord. What a great promise of fellowship that we can have you, my Lord, my King, my glorious one, on an individual basis, one-on-one, -on -one whenever we need you. We receive your grace this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We exalt you, my King. Worthy is the Lamb of God. <laughs> you are so worthy. You are so worthy, Jesus. Our souls thirst for you. Hallelujah. As the deer panteth for the waters, so our souls thirst for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Come on, this is an atmosphere of worship. I didn't plan it. It's just where he's at right now. Can you join in this morning? Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. We welcome your presence in this place. Hallelujah. There is none like you, my Father, my King. None like you, Lord. Nobody like you this morning. Nobody can do for us what you've done for us already. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, our homes, many of our homes are in turmoil and in upheaval. And we put on a good face to come into the place of worship. But my Father, today in the name of Jesus, I pray that you even now would release your angelic host and the host of heaven to marshal the forces of God against the demonic oppression. Hallelujah. And the strategy of the enemy that would try to hold our homes hostage. Going home feeling bad, feeling alone, feeling empty. By the authority of God, it is not your will. So fill us up in this place this morning, Father. 
Fill us up so that we would want no more. Let our cups overflow with your presence, with your love, Lord God. Hallelujah. My cup, surely, as David has said, my cup runneth over. Let my life spill into somebody else's life. Let my words be edifying and strength to someone else. Father, we release all of the judgment of the enemy and of the world. We declare that we are who you say we are. I am who you say I am. I am a child of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Can you sing just a little bit? Hallelujah. Sing a little. together like you have lost your mind this morning and give God praise come on come on give him praise come on give him praise give him praise hallelujah hallelujah yeah that's what I'm talking about yeah <laughs> hallelujah he's worthy to be praised hallelujah God bless you shake somebody's hand shake somebody's hand as you sit down shake somebody's hand as you sit down and tell them that you love Jesus amen Amen. 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 Glory to God this morning. We're delighted that you're here. I certainly want to take an opportunity to welcome our YouTube audience. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, however you got here, we're glad you're here. We are Life Point Christian Faith Center, located at 1221st Avenue in the city of Coralville, Iowa. We'd love to have you come down. Our services are Sundays at 10 a.m. We also have a first Sunday evening service at 5 p.m. We'd love to have you come be a part of that. If you're ever in the local area, please, please feel free to give us a call. Send us an email. If you have any questions, we'd be more than happy to answer them. But we're delighted that whatever got you here, we believe it's by the power of the Holy Spirit. So welcome. Get something to write with. Get ready to receive from God and put your faith out there. Ladies and gentlemen, would you welcome our YouTube audience this morning? Yeah. Amen. Amen. And I'm certainly delighted for our first time guests. Thank you for being here. We're certainly delighted. However you got here, we're glad you're here. And we just trust that God has brought you here for a plan and a purpose. Even if it's only to hear one message, we trust that God, by the Holy Ghost, is going to bring revelation to your heart. Amen. 
It is by faith, the Bible says, that we are saved. And we just trust that God is going to do something great and special for you this morning. Would you give our first time guests here a wonderful hand of applause? Amen. <laughs> Praise God. I want to take an opportunity. I didn't get a chance to do this last week because we had a special service going on. Uh, I wanted to, on behalf of my wife and I, say a great big thank you to all of you. You guys blessed us so much on our anniversary. Our anniversary was April the 16th. We're celebrating uh, 36 years of marriage, uh, so we're delighted for that. And both my wife and I celebrated a birthday this month, and so we're at level 57. Amen? And so we're... We're glad for that, and thank you all so much. I love you. I appreciate it. I would love to hug each one of your necks, but some of y'all might not want that. But anyway, I'll blow kisses to you and tell you thank you for being so special. We are delighted, and my wife and I have the best job in the world, and that is Shepherding Life Point Christian Faith Center. I hear somebody say amen. Amen. So thank you so much. Here in just a few weeks, we'll be going on vacation. Uh, this will be our first full family vacation in a while. And so the whole family is going. So we're excited about that. And I'm even more excited that my kids have money. Amen, somebody. Amen. Okay, I'm just saying. <laughs> amen. 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 So some of y'all, when y'all kids get older, you know what I'm talking about. Amen. So we're glad for you. We had a great time uh, the last couple of weeks. Uh, we were displaced last Sunday because of the uh, event that was going on. But it was OK because we were still here and this place was packed. Man, it was packed in here. So we're glad that that people came out and were blessed. And so that means that tells me that you guys are spreading the word that life point. Church Alive is worth the what? Worth the drive. And so that tells me that you guys are putting the word out there that LifePoint is helping your life. I trust that the word that's coming forth, that comes forth on a weekly basis, is something that you can build your life upon. Amen. Uh, I, I make no apologies for who I am. For those of you that are here for the first time as a first time guest, I tell you, just buckle up because we're going for a ride this morning. Amen by the leading of the Holy Spirit, and he'll get us to where we want to get to. But we, I, I, I just feel like if I'm going to help you, I'm going to have to be real with you. Amen? I've said time and time again that Life Point is a tough place to be. How many people can say amen to that? Because what we do is we, we want to make sure that you are accountable to the word of God. I don't want you just showing up just to be able to have a, have a, a check mark in the box of, of Sunday and worship. I want you to take the word, which the only way it's going to work for you is you take the word and apply it to your life. Amen? And so those of us that are that are going uh, to the destiny, our destiny is eternity. Amen. And so we want to make sure that we are. It's our mandate to prepare people to be ready to do what? Meet the Lord. Amen. How many of you know that every day, every one of us is going to meet the Lord one day? OK. And so because of that, I want to make sure that we're ready. It's my job. The Lord has laid it on my heart. And this is the place where life life begins. Right. 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 Yeah, where lives change and where life can begin again. And so we want your life to be changing. Your life needs to be changing. And you need to understand that new life is what this is all about. Can you say amen to that? And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to minister to you today. We've been talking uh, for, for uh, since the calendar year from the topic of from restoration to harvest. That's the, the, the prophetic word that the Lord has given us, uh, particularly for this season, from restoration to harvest. And so I'm going to stay along that same line, if that's okay with you. And just begin to speak as God gives me utterance this morning. Can you believe with me for utterance this morning? All right, I appreciate that. Three of y'all will do that. Uh, the rest of y'all can just join in and, and catch up with us. But uh, it is utterance that we need. Amen? Amen? Utterance simply means the word that comes from God. Some people would call it rhema, which is a word from God that is instant or instantaneous. It's differentiated from the word logos written word of God, both are valid, both are necessary. Can you say amen to that? So with that being said, what God does many times is he uses us and he uses you and I really in the same vein to be able to take his message to people who don't know him, right? And so uh, on this past week, uh, um, for the last couple of weeks, we've been doing interviews for our minister's class. Where's all our minister's class participants? Raise your hand so I can see, so other people can see you. Raise them up high. There's a few of you in the room. And these people are coming into our minister's class. We've got eight that will be coming in to start in the first part of June, and we're delighted that they're coming. Uh, but I told them that they, they need to get ready because God certainly has a plan for their lives. Amen? And there may be some of you this morning. Please forgive me. I've been challenging, battling stuff, you know, over the last, yesterday, I, I, I think I laid down at 12 p.m. or whatever time my last meeting was and didn't get up until this morning. 
So I've been just trying to strengthen my body. So if you pray with me and pray for me, we'll, we'll get through this. Amen. Amen. But with that being said, what God, God's desire is to show you what his plan is for your life. You know, how many of you have ever said, I don't know what I'm supposed to do, or I don't know what I should be doing for God? You don't have to raise your hands. I know it's true. I know it's true. There was a time in my life when my wife and I, can I, can I, have, can I have 50 minutes, please? Um, there was a time when my wife and I, um, when we first got born again, uh, we really struggled with that question. And I'm going to tell you, what makes good decisions is what? Good information. If you don't have good information, you will make bad decisions. Amen. Say amen. amen. So information is what you need. Now, I'm going to tell you that we were getting information from a lot of places, but not all the information that we were getting was good. And not all of the information that we were getting was God. Amen. And some of it was coming from a church, and it wasn't all God. Okay, I'll talk to this side over here. Cause... And so when the church gives you bad information, how many of you know you really, you, you really, you're in a bad place? Because if it steers you wrong, what else are you going to turn to? And what happens when we get steered wrong in, quote, unquote, a church, we, we have a tendency to blame God when the fault is really on us. You say, well, it's the preacher's fault. No, it ain't the preacher's fault. It's your fault. Why? Because if I have the same capacity to, to receive from God, based on what his word says, I don't get anything more or less than you get unless I open this book and apply it. Right? I heard Brother Copeland say this a long time ago. Thank you. Brother Copeland said, uh, you know that big old Bible that you got sitting on, you know, that grandma Bible? You know that, you know that, you know them old big old Bibles that you got the family lineage in and all the names of people, the whole family tree? That's probably going to be the Bible that God uses to school you in heaven if you didn't open it. You know what I'm saying? You know, because we have access to the kingdom of God and we, we settle for Netflix. Come on now. Are we, are we going to be real this morning? We just going, y'all want me to just. <laughs> I, I want you to write this down. Write this down. I've been saying this so much over the last two weeks, and I hadn't said it in a long time. It's relevant to who you are. How many of you really want to be used by God? And, and then listen, wait a minute. Before you raise your hand, right, before you raise your hand, I'm not talking about necessarily a five, four minutes. I'm talking about you just want to be somebody that, you know, people get blessed when you're around. Is that anybody in here? Okay. And then write this phrase down. Write this down. Y'all ready? Preparation plus opportunity equals destiny. Preparation plus opportunity equals destiny. And I would get deeper into that with you, but I'm going to let you stew on that for a little while. You can write that just somewhere on your page. Because... Every one of us right now, this morning, this morning, and even those watching online or via YouTube that couldn't be here for whatever reason, if you're watching, if you're diligent, if you're listening, if you're taking time, you're taking notes, and you're not just writing notes only on Sunday, you know what I'm talking about? Because the notes on Sunday don't do any good unless you look at them on Monday. Right? Okay? So if you're doing that, then what you're doing is making preparation for God to give you an opportunity. He wants to give you an opportunity. He wants to give you. Matter of fact, I dare say that, that really the opportunity, my wife, when she took up the offering this morning, she said a phrase that we learned a long time ago. The, the seed that leaves my hand does not leave my life, but it enters into my future waiting for my arrival. In other words, when we start this journey with Jesus, we are on a, dest we are, we are on a, a des uh, destiny. We're, on a, we're, on a, we're going somewhere, Right? How many of you would agree that Peter, when he launched out, when Jesus stepped on his boat and Jesus says, hey, launch out into the deep, Peter didn't know the full scale of what Jesus was getting ready to do with him. Because we know that because there wasn't any faith mixed with it. He said, because nevertheless, at your word. He didn't say, oh, yeah, a Messiah. Hey, you know, yeah, let's do this. No, he said, we just got done working all night long and you want us to try to catch fish in the daytime. In other words, I know my business, Jesus, but nevertheless, are you feeling me this morning? And so he launches out into the deep, and what happened? He hauled in such a, he, there was such a haul of fish, man, that he had to call his buddies over. Right. Now, do you notice this, that his buddies weren't sitting? Now, what was Peter doing when Jesus walked up to him? Cleaning his nets. So that means he was where? 
He was on the shore. He was done fishing. Some of you think that you're done with everything that you're supposed to accomplish with God. And God is just getting started with you because you are just getting information that will cause you to launch out into deep so that he can really bring in a haul in your life. And so what we have to say is, nevertheless, that's your word. So what he does, and this is the cool part, because what he does when, when he says that to Peter, Peter says, OK, OK, I get it. You know, midday, you know, it's hot out there and I'm a catcher. I, I catch fish. That's what I do. I don't fish. I catch fish. There's a difference. So I know when I'm going, I'm planning on catching. And I know what time to go, Brother David. Right. And the time to, to not go is in the middle of the day. So Jesus challenges his paradigm, challenges his way of thinking and says, push out here, son, and let's go do this. And not only the, the, his buddies. Now, this is why it's important to have the right covenant family. Because obviously his buddies had to be within earshot or eyeshot. They had to see what was going on, even if they couldn't hear the conversation. So when they saw, see this guy that's dressed weird and sounding weird. Oh, yeah, I hear what I'm saying. He's not talking like the traditional Pharisees and Sadducees. He says, listen, let's go do this thing. And he doesn't know about fishing because he's not a fisherman. He's a carpenter. Right. So when when his boys are now, I'm just going to get real real this morning when his boys watch and they looking like, OK, look, what's Peter doing? I don't know, but get ready. Pulling the nets. He, he's pulling in the nets. He's getting ready to push out. Y'all get, we got everything? Because you can't, listen, you can't wait to get out in the water to know that you forgot something on the shore. Y'all hear me this morning. So you can't wait and pray. Oh, help me, God. You got to pray before you get out in the water. You got to be ready. Preparation. So what are you doing now? Now is your time of preparation. What God does is he gives you opportunity. And what did Peter encounter? When Peter got out there and, and all the rest of them, he had to call over for help. They all were pushing right into their destiny. Amen. All right. Y'all all right. OK. Turn with me. Turn with me to uh, to John. Second John, please. Hallelujah. To John. Oh, God, you're so good. Hey. Praise God. Second John, I'm going to read uh, uh, verses eight and nine. If you have a say, amen. amen. All right. Verse eight says, be careful. Watch yourselves that you do not lose everything that you have worked for, but that you receive your full reward. You need to mark that in your Bible. You need to mark that in your Bible. I'm going to read verse nine. I'm going to come back to that one. Anyone who goes beyond or runs ahead of Christ's teaching and does not continue to follow only his teaching does not have God. Isn't that interesting? But whoever continues to follow the teaching of Christ, isn't that what you're doing this morning? I said, isn't that what you're doing this morning? Has both the Father and the Son. All right? Now, let's look at this word reward for a minute. I, I, I want to I, I just, uh, and we, 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 we teach on this here anyway. How many of you ever heard of a gentleman by the name of John Bevere? Anybody? And see, what happens is we as a, a institution... I'm going to make sure I say it the right way. We as an institution get religious more than we realize. What do I mean by that? I'm a, I'm a, y'all got your religious toes in? Okay, everybody know what I mean by religious toes, right? What happens is through the, through the everyday Challenges of life, because, see, the devil doesn't necessarily challenge you on Sunday. He can and he will. I mean, just using my wife and I as an example, we didn't do it today. It was a good day. <laughs> but there's times when we get ready to go to church and we get into a, a tiss or a tiff. A tiff. Y'all know what a tiff is? Okay. You, when you live around somebody for a long period of time, that's easy to do. You know, it's, it's on Sunday that all of a sudden you lock your keys in the car or your husband is grouchy for some reason and he's been good all week. <laughs> right? Or your wife can't seem to find the right pair of earrings and, and, and she's been looking for 35 minutes. So he doesn't really necessarily mess with you on Sundays because, because in the process of you uh, 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 pushing in to learn about God, 
the Sunday day is a day when you already know what you plan on doing, you're going to do. Can I say, can I say it that way? I mean, you know, I know that we have challenges and we have to overcome things. You know, I didn't feel like getting out of bed this morning. Thank God for those people that come help me and getting the things lined up. You know, they know who they are and they know what I'm talking about. Because, you know, I mean, you know how it gets. You just don't feel, you just, you're not feeling it. And so, but I knew, you know, how many of you would have been okay with me if I didn't show up today? Okay, you're right. Thank you for being honest. Some of y'all need to, some of y'all will cast out lying devils in a minute, okay? But thank you for being honest. You wouldn't be okay with me not showing up today. Not when I preach healing and then I'm bound, trying to, you know, devil trying to bind me up with sickness. You know, okay, so let's say you give me a pass and I don't show up this Sunday. What about next Sunday? I just choose, you know what? I'm just not feeling it. I'm going to go out, I'm going to go catch some fish. How many of y'all going to go for that? You're not. Stop lying. You're not. You know you're not, okay? You're not going to go for that, right? But, but, but in the process of that, he knows about my life and your life that this day is a day that I've already committed to do the will of God no matter what comes. Nothing, catching fish does never override the plan of God for my life on a Sunday. Unless, I'm, unless that day is programmed into my calendar. You feeling what I'm saying? Unless I'm on vacation. Now, with that being said, if that's the case, then what other day of the week is he going to try to really bind me up? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You ever notice that all of, the, all of the stuff that goes on in your life seems to happen in one of those days, and in the process of you going through your week, you have to remind yourself because there's no, there's no Kelsey, there's no Randy, there's no Andrea that's going to jump out of their closet and start playing some song for you and lift you up. <laughs> Pastor Tommy's not going to show up and tell you how, how much of an overcomer you are because I don't live with you, Right? So you have to know already that, that listen, when you get right, because, listen, it's not a matter of if you go through, it's a matter of when you're going to go through. So what happens is, is the devil tries to convince us, listen, his plan and his tactic is to cause us somehow or another to, to lose sight of who he is, who Jesus is, right, and what he's done in me, he's done something in me. Has he done anything in anybody else? Let me try this out because they ain't sound. Yeah. Has he done anything in you? Yes. Has he saved you? Yes. Has he brought your family back together? Yes. Has he healed your body? Yes. He's done that because he loves you and loves you and I. But the devil is trying to keep me from ever acknowledging that through the course of my week. So what happens when I go through the course of my week and I don't acknowledge that I get weak? And you know what happens when we get weak? We start losing our reward. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Our, our dear sister in the faith, Terry, Terry Foy, uh, Dr. Savelle's oldest, uh, youngest daughter, says this. What we need to do is stop making excuses. <laughs> huh? Come on. And start, if we're going to do, listen, if it's, it's like this, stand up, Kelsey, real quick for me. Kelsey says, PT, I need you to do this for me. I need you to fill out a reference for me. Okay, right, 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 okay, okay, and I say, Kelsey, I'll do it, and then I don't do it, right? He's counting on me to do it because I said I would do it, right? Should he have to, how many times should you have to ask me? One time, thank you, you sit down. Now, if I don't do it, what, what happened? Oh, well, you know, man, uh, my computer went down. Well, use your phone. Use your tablet. It's getting quiet in here, I better hear it, yeah. Um, use somebody else's. I got more than one computer in my house. Anybody else got it like that? I, you know, I got access. I can go to the library. If I said I was going to do it, I need to do it. Well, what then has really happened? What has happened is I have not determined that it is a priority in my life to fulfill my own word. That came out better when I was practicing it. That's it. <laughs> If I say, Jim, I'm going to do it, and then I don't do it, and I am filled with his spirit, Jim, not Jim's spirit, Jesus' spirit, but he got the same spirit. We have the same spirit of faith, right? If I'm filled with the spirit of God, would God keep his word? Then how come we don't? I told you, this is a tough place to come. Now, I'm not saying it to be negative. What I'm saying it is then we're the same people that stand up here and say, Hallelujah. 
Lord, bless me. You know, we want God to bless us when we get into something. But we forget to acknowledge his blessing is upon us. According to Galatians 3.19, his blessing is upon us from the day that we accept him as Lord. So then what, what does my reward have to do with it, Pastor Tommy? Well, I'm glad you asked. Thank you for asking. Because, see, what we fail to realize, and I know it's true, we fail to realize that the reward that God has planned for us, according to this word, is, is not just making it into heaven. Many of us will be satisfied, or we think we will, because we really have no concept of heaven. Except what the word says, or except what we receive by revelation. We don't have a concept of heaven. Come on now. I mean, we want one, and we get it. We know, you know, the, the, the pearl... Not the pearly gates, but the gates made of pearl, streets lined of gold, right? We get that, the fountain that flows from the throne of God. We get that. But we don't see ourselves living in the community of heaven. Many of us have not realized it's not that God has, has a mansion for you per se. He does, but he has a dwelling. The proper, proper uh, uh, um, um, translation of that word is he has a dwelling and abode for you there that, that is better than anything that they could imagine here on earth. Okay, so, so how is God going to figure out where, where, where Tristan lives as opposed to Tommy lives? Is it because I'm the pastor and she's not? No. He's going to base it on the obedience that I give to him based on what he's told me to do. Right? I don't get a reward. My reward is not based on getting all of the metro area of Iowa City, Iowa saved. It's not because that's not my job. My job as a shepherd of this house is to feed you according to the Holy Ghost, to feed you and take you to pastures of his word that cause you to say, wow, man, God, you are awesome. Man, God, I am growing. Man, God, I am being fed. That's not me. That's him. Amen. Right. But in the process of being fed, you got to do something. That's right. Amen. Can you imagine who said chew? you got to chew and you better swallow. Can you imagine sitting at a table and never swallowing, <laughs> never eating? Yeah, you just get bloated and, and just full and full. Now, I don't mean to be gross, and I'm certainly not going to go there. I'll let the adults in here use their imagination. But at some point, you're going to have to get up from that table. <laughs> right? Because you've got to, you've, what's in you has to come out. Amen. And what God does is he says, listen, he says, listen, Tommy, all, what I want you to do is, is I want you to be faithful and obedient to preach my word in season, out of season, when they want to hear it, when they don't want to hear it, when you feel like it, when you don't feel like it, when it's convenient, when it's not convenient. Tell the word. Do it by faith. Uh, just, just get out here and broadcast my message to everybody that will listen. And then I get the reward based on my obedience. Ah. Oh. And so it's like, okay, well, what is my reward? Well, I'm glad you asked, Mike, because if I don't plan on living in a shack on earth, I sure ain't plan on living one in heaven. <laughs> I wish I had Affabel so y'all could hear it. How many of you have heard Affabel? How many of y'all heard Affabel by John Bevere? You need to hear that. So, so, so what then is going to determine how I get, can I just say it this way, how I get paid by God. Now, I'm not talking about your bank accounts. Get that out your mind. I'm talking about your heavenly reward. Yeah. You know, there are things that affect your heavenly bank account down here, and they're based on what? Your own choices. Yeah. If you got to have the, you got to have the, the, the I, don't, I don't go to Starbucks, but the grande, whatever they, you know, you got, huh? Vente, latte, whatever. <laughs> If you got to have that and you got to have it every every day of the week and you're going to get it regardless of what other, uh, else has got to be done. And you look at your, your, your accounting, your profit and loss statement at the end of the month and you kind of hitting the deficit. Well, you got to go back and look at all the decisions you made to have the latte. Right. Come on. Now, I'm not I'm not down in lattes. I drink coffee when I feel like drinking coffee. I'm not against coffee. I'm just saying, you know, it's the same thing to be said about people don't want to shop. I like shopping. My wife tells me you can go get me something anytime, baby. Am I lying? Because I got, I, got, I got good taste. And I don't like cheap stuff, Christian. Now, I got it from my dad. Right? You know, I'm just saying. So, so if I go get her something, if, I, if the Lord tells me to buy you a gift, you can, you can best believe it ain't. Well, okay, I got to be careful. <laughs> 
It's probably not going to come from Walmart, Robin, is all I'm saying. Unless it's a gift card, okay? Now, what does that mean? That means that I, the choices that I make are going to determine what I, what I do and don't do. Now, in, in, but we don't put that in the heavenly context. And so what I suggest to you is that you might say, well, how then am I going to get rewarded? Have you ever thought about it? Most of us don't think about it. Well, I'm going to pick on Elder Cynthia here, Elder Fisher. Look, she pulled her foot in. <laughs> I don't know if she meant to do it or not, but it was good timing. Well, I could say to Elder Fisher, I could say, Cynthia, listen, I need you, to, and she's one of our elders here at the church. I say, I need you to do me a favor, and I've, done, I've said that to you before. Never. She could say, okay, pastor, and she could not do it. Now, unless I'm doing my homework, I wouldn't know if she did it or not, because there's this thing called inspect what you expect. If, if you're going to represent the king, guess what? He's going to inspect what you do. Oh, okay. All right. If, if, in this case, I'm gonna, it's my responsibility. And what did, I tell, what did I tell you to do? Make sure you follow up with me. Give me an update. Give me a follow up. That's my, that's my inspection. Now, if she goes out there and she does it half heartedly, listen to me now, half heartedly, uh, late. What are, what, what, are, what are our core values around here? Anybody know? Anybody know what our core values here are? Timeliness. Integrity is ties. The acronym is ties. Timeliness, integrity, excellence, service. service with a smile. Okay? So if she goes out and she does it late, um, half does it, which speaks to her integrity, has no excellence about it, you know, hey, well, you know, Pastor Tommy told me to do this, so here you go. <laughs> and doesn't really serve the need of the individual and certainly doesn't smile. Does she get a reward for doing it? Listen, 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 before you answer. Yes, she does. Who said partial? She gets a partial reward. Now, the problem with the partial reward is that most of us don't want that. Because the partial reward speaks to our own negligence in carrying out the will of God for our lives. Dang, I'm going to stay right here because I, 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 I hear something. So, so what then happens is a cumulative effect begins to take place in our religious thinking. I think that I can say that I'm coming and going to help in the children's ministry and don't show up. Mm -hmm. And ain't nobody going to call me on it. Yeah, yeah I, I, got, I wish I could get a better amen. I, I, I think that, you know, so just like I said, I'm the pastor of this church, but I decided I'm going to skip a couple Sundays because I don't really feel it. And then, you know, uh, when, when there's a church split, then I'm looking for somebody to blame. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and what happens is because we get into routines as humanity, the next thing we start doing is we start falling into a pattern of doing things half-heartedly for the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Now, here's the problem with that. Because we don't see, God doesn't shoot a lightning bolt down and bust you right on the spot. Right? Right? Now, y'all laugh, but in the Old Testament, he'd do something like that. Before Jesus showed up, you know, man, the earth would open up and people would fall in. And, and, but because he doesn't, he doesn't bring immediate judgment or, listen, immediate reward on your disobedience, that's called grace. And what he's doing is he's giving you and I an opportunity to repent. Because, see, a lot of us do wrong but don't repent. Not this church. And so it's all good. It's all good. But John writes, he says, be careful that you receive your full reward. And I got to thinking about this one day. I remember hearing John Bevere preach this at a church I was at in Texas. He, he was there, and you guys have heard that story before. But, and he's teaching this, and I'm thinking to myself. I'm sitting on the front row as one of the staff pastors, my wife and I, and we're sitting there, and I'm thinking to myself, Am I really going to receive a full reward? You know what I started? Here's what I started doing. I don't know what you do, but here's what I started doing. I started asking myself how I treated the lady that cleans the church. I started asking myself if I was really invested in my pastor's vision. 
I started asking myself how many times I could have. Now, now this, isn't, this, isn't, this is a stretch for me because I don't do this, and I never have. But I started asking myself how many times I was in church, but I wasn't in, in church. Yeah. I was just kind of there. Yeah. And, and, you know, the Lord is gracious. He didn't, he didn't sweep me up and, you know, kind of spat me down and stomp on me. And then, you know, he didn't do all that. But he made me realize that I, he watches everything. That everything... Everything that we say we do in the name of the Lord is important. Now, there's going to come a time, and I'm not going to go there. I'm going to move on from this because I think I've just about worn this point out. There's coming a time that each one of us, each one of us, we're going to stand before the judgment seat of the Lord. Can you say amen to that? We're not going to be judged for sin. Can you say amen to that? Some of y'all are like, I know. Your sins have already been judged. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. This church has got to be further than that. Your sins have already been judged. Now, if you are going to be judged for your sins, that means you haven't repented. And only you and God know that. Isn't that right? So you've been judged for so. So then what is it that I'm going to be judged for? For your obedience and for your reward. Mm -hmm. Well, what does that mean? It means this. I heard, I heard Dad Higgins say this on a, on a message uh, I only saw him one time in person, and was, he wasn't preaching when I saw him, but um, I heard him say this. He said, there's going to be a lot of pastors out there, big name, big time, got all these people coming to the church, that when they get to heaven, they're going to be just ordinary people in heaven. That's, he didn't use that word, but I'm using it for context, okay? And you know who God's going you know to welcome? Welcome to the front. He's going he's gonna to welcome... C c c c come here, Kathy, since you sit right there. He's going to welcome. Now, come walk. Wait, stand right there. Walk like an old lady. You ain't, you ain't there yet, but walk like an old lady. Can you do that? Come on. Walk. Now, I know I've seen you dance before. So I know you. Can, so, now, this, this old mother who, listen now, who can barely, keep coming, who can barely make it in the church door has been one of the ones who's been faithful to pray the church into existence. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? When God tells her to pray, she prays. When God tells her to fast, she fasts. God tells her, come on, I want you to make it out to the house of God and go out there and just, just encourage the pastors. Thank you, you said that. Huh? And that person that carries, in your eyes, your, yours and my eye, carry no influence. Barely got two quarters to scratch together to pay tithe. And really doesn't have an influential voice. Now, when, when, when the saints, you ever heard the song, when the saints go marching in? When the saints go marching in and God, the, the, the Lord Jesus, pushes them preachers aside and says, come here, darling. Right? I got, a, I got a throne set up here for you. All the people that walked by her on Sunday didn't speak. Y'all hear what I'm saying? All the people that counted her as nothing. Yeah, they'll be there, but they're going to be down there. And, and, and that old mother going to be the one caught, honey. Honey, honey, go over there. And can you go over there? Now, you can't imagine dirt being in heaven, so I'm just, y'all stay with me, okay? Go over there and pick up that little flower petal that, that fell off and bring it to me. And yet you were, you were a pastor of a 10,000, 20,000 member church. See, God's reward system is not based on how good we look. Huh? God's reward system is based on our obedience to do what he says, the way he says it, doing it with joy, doing with all the Bible says, whatever that your hands find to do, do it heartily as unto the Lord. If you drive in a, drive in a lift, if you drive in an Uber, if you drive in a school bus, if you if you're working in the cafeteria, if you dig in a ditch, if you uh, if you perform a surgery, if you are a psychologist, if you are a therapist, you got to do it heartily as unto the Lord. If you are a housewife, if you are a stay-at-home mom, stay-at-home dad, you got to do it because God is watching and, baby, he's taking notes. And everybody don't see that during the course of the week, nor should they. But when you come in this house, man, and you know that you have, you have done your best all week long to be pleasing to the master, and if you feel like you've done something wrong, and you just, look, I repent when I, when I, there's times I repent when I get out the bed in the morning. I'm serious. My wife married my wife, she said, why you repent so much? I don't know. <laughs> you know, because I, you know, I, I know why now, I didn't know why then, because I had a sin consciousness. I was always aware of sin. God doesn't want you always aware of sin. You are not a sinner saved by grace. 
you are saved by grace. Amen? And that through faith. Can you say amen to that? Are you all right? Give me a few more minutes here. Okay. Uh, turn with me to uh, Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10, 36. I'm almost finished. I'll get out your way. Amen. Glory to God. I got one more point to make on that, but turn, hold on, Tim. When you get over Hebrews 10, hold on. Verse 36. <laughs> How many of you work for someone else in here other than God, okay? Other than God. Some people say, well, I work for God. Okay, I ain't trying to get you all that spiritual, okay? How many of you in here work for somebody else? Work for somebody else. Somebody else writes your paycheck, okay? All right, good. Thank you for being honest. Okay. When you work for that person and you don't show up and you don't call, they call it what? No call. <laughs> she said AWOL. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> she said AWOL. Absent without leave. They call it no call, no show. I don't know. It's been a long time since I worked in a secular environment, but I remember I only had so many points. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I remember I only had so many days. And if I exceeded the amount of days, you know, now to be clear, how many business owners do we have in here? Would you raise your hand? Any business owners? Okay. As a business owner, as a business owner, you got to keep this in mind. Don't keep sorry people working for you. Be, listen, no, seriously. Be slow to hire and quick to fire. Let them go. Okay, because if they if listen, if they will if they will call in on you without cause, they'll steal from you too. Okay, anyway, so so but I remember I only had so many times I could be absent, and I also remember that if I was going to be absent, I had to call in before a certain time, before the shift started, whether first, second, or third shift. Am I right about it? And so I'd call in because I'd want to keep my all right. So then it made sense that I would have to follow the. Why is it that when the church asks you to serve. I got quiet up in this church, brother. <laughs> and we don't call and we don't show that we think it's OK. Because we don't see the reward. Now, when I miss a day, I expect that my, my check is going to be a little lighter unless I got comp time, right? But see, God comp time. And, 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 and you say, well, and, 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 and trust me, I get it. You have no frame of reference. I know this. I know this because you have no idea how many, how many rewards you have deducted from your overall paycheck in heaven. And if you don't think, I know, you know, I use paycheck because everybody can kind of frame that. But, but the reward that you get is going to, you know, you know the real reward that you get? What's the real reward that we're going to get? Who can tell me? Say again. Right on, spot right on. The kingdom of heaven is, the expanse of the kingdom of heaven is immense. Somebody got to live out in the suburbs, I'm just saying. Now, I would say ghetto, but ain't no ghetto in heaven. Huh? But somebody going to be living on the fringes. I don't want to be one. You say, well, how can you? Listen, I'm not living my life based on your judgment of me. God, thank you, Lord. I'm living my life based on his criteria. I'm just saying. So, so, so look. When we, you know, I, I mean, <laughs> I got to be careful here. Okay. Um, as somebody who's had people working for them, I remember I had a person working for me, and I gave them their paycheck. And that paycheck had, had very little digits on it. And the look on their face was priceless. And they forgot that they didn't come to work. Isn't it funny how people that don't come to work forget they didn't come to work? 
And then we get in and we get it all loud. Uh, uh, excuse me. Excuse, we, remember when you were working as, at payroll, right? And my wife used to work payroll, you know, in North Carolina. And she, lived, she worked right around the, I mean, you could have walked to work from where we were. And, and she'd come home sometimes, she'd be like, bless God. Because folks come in complaining and crying and mad. Why? Because all of a sudden, you know, they've something wrong with my paycheck. What's wrong with your paycheck is you ain't going to work. <laughs> now, in, in, in a worldly connotation, you know, um, and we think about it that way. We say no big deal. But, but uh, you know, when it comes to when you get to heaven, now, that's what I'm telling you. Now, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm trying to be real. Baby, we we got we to gotta tighten this stuff up. All right. Amen. You all right? Hebrews 10, 36, if you have a say, amen. So he says here, he says, uh, well, look, can I back up to 35, please? So do not lose or throw away your, the courage that you had in the past or your confidence and your trust in God. He says, which has great what? Who has a King James Version? What does it say? Recompense? Mine says reward. It has a great payback to it. But you can only do it if you don't lose your courage, if you don't quit. One of Dr. Savelle's primary messages, don't quit. How many of you have ever felt like quitting? Every hand in this room should go up. If you don't feel like quitting, it's because you ain't doing nothing. If you're going to do something in the kingdom, particularly in a charismatic church, we, have no, we don't have a denominational backing here. We don't have anybody that's funneling money in here. We had to start from the ground up. I mean the ground up up there was nothing are you hearing me people come in they oh wow you know this is great but there's so much work to be done exactly <laughs> when you get out to these big churches we, you know when we go out to Eagle Mountain man Michael, how many of y'all been to Eagle Mountain raise your hand in, in Texas you go out to Eagle Mountain you go out to Heritage of Faith you go out to, to Living Word in both Minnesota and 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 and, and, and uh, uh, Forest Park in Chicago you go out here man and stuff is booming and banging and wh bells and whistles and all these people standing strong, looking good, you know, a whole orchestra blowing and blasting it. Boy, it's good. The atmosphere is great. But they didn't start that way. Somebody had to do the work. And it's, yeah, it's going to be that way. Somebody got to show up and do some work. Amen. Woo, glory to God. Are you all right? Let me finish reading this. He says, he says here, the uh, for it, verse 30, 30 uh, let me finish 36. So you can do what God wants or the will of God and receive what he has promised. You see that? You're not doing this for nothing. And bless God, please, please look up, me, up, me and hear, up at me and hear me. You ain't doing this just to get in heaven. If that's your mindset, then you are, you are severely misguided. <laughs> like the old folks who say, I'm going on to heaven anyhow. No, you're not. You're going on to heaven empty handed. You know, and, 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 you know, and I, can, I can use my imagination. You may not like it, and you may not agree. I don't care. If you can prove me wrong, you do it. But I'm going to tell you, it's like you know, I believe, I believe this for a long time, especially when I first, when, you know, when my dad, when I found out that what my dad as a pastor was teaching and preaching, you know, it was good, but there wasn't a whole lot of revelation behind it. It was just denominational thinking. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And, and then I realized one day, and I was listening, and I, I had to say that partially I got it from Brother Copeland, something he was teaching. I was listening, I was listening, I was listening, I was listening, I was listening. And all of a sudden that thing just kind of, bam, hit my heart. And I realized, you know what? If I don't learn it here, I'm going to learn it in heaven. Do you, do you not know that there are classrooms in heaven? Why would there be education on the earth and not in heaven? Why do we think that? All of a sudden, Holy Spirit is there. And now you see him for who he really is. Now we just have to envision and feel and sense that the spirit of the living God is upon me. For he hath anointed me. Come on, somebody. But when I see him, and all of a sudden, oh, wow. And then all of a sudden you go and the apostle Paul decides that he's going to break out and teach you on grace. But because we didn't learn grace on the earth, we got to learn grace up here. And all that stuff that men was teaching us was a bunch of garbage and hoodoo baha. Oh, I can do whatever I want to do because I'm under grace. That ain't grace. I can see, I, you know, I really want to sit in one of Daniel's classes. Please tell me, Daniel, how did you sit there in a lion's den and hold your composure? Huh? He going to have something to say about that. But we think, oh, well, you know, we're just, you know, well, you know, I'll get to heaven and everything will be all right. And then I'm really concerned about those people who think it's just going to work out okay. 
Okay, I'll keep going. I know y'all, that was a great revelation. That was my revelation, not yours. Okay? So he goes on to say, for, verse 37, for in a very short time, write down the scripture, Isaiah 26 and 20. For in a very short, short time, the one who is coming will come and will not delay. Your reward is coming. Tell your neighbor, your reward is coming. 2 Timothy 2. I'm almost finished. Can I have a few more minutes? 2 Timothy 2. Turn there for me if you would, please. 2 Timothy 2. Glory to God. See, one of the things that, that has really blessed me personally, you know, um, my wife and I use this a lot, and, and I'm going to tell it to you. For one, you've heard me say this many times, God hates self-reliance. If you are reliant on your own gifting and your own intellect and your own strength and all the things that you've acquired, your wealth and everything, you don't need God. And we can see many instances in Scripture. Jesus talked about that. You know, where, where he talks about it over in Luke where he talks about where the, the man is, sits back and he looks back and he's got all of this that he's accumulating. Now he's going to big, build a bigger barn. Y'all know what I'm talking about? And what does the Lord say to him? Uh, time out. Your life is over. Right? So, so that means nothing to God. So God hates self-reliance. I'm going to tell you something else he, he hates. He hates rigid people. Rigid people. She says stiff neck. People that are inflexible. If you're going to do something for God, I'm talking about doing something that's going to, going to bring about, a, we're talking about from restoration to harvest. See, when Jesus came on board in your life, you accepted him. That's the only way he got there. When you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord, you all of a sudden, restoration, the process of restoration started right then. Once that process started, the only thing left for you to do is not keep being restored. Are you hearing me? You're not going to keep being restored. To keep being restored means that you keep stepping back into sin. We're not living that way. So what, what's happening is he started the restoration process. Now I'm moving on to my what? Harvest. And on the way to my harvest, I get, I get people like the Kalers in my life. I get people like Christian, Tristan, David. I get all, all these things come into my life that as, as part of the whole congregation of righteous. We believe the same. We trust God. We're going on to a uh, destination that God has prepared for us. Right. But 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 in the process of him doing the restoration thing uh, and excuse me, getting to the harvest, we've got to understand that his harvest plan for us is not just going to happen when we get in heaven. You know, my wife and I, when, when we were when we got born again um, and, uh, you know, you've heard me say it, I'm not going to get into it at length, but um, we were we we made certain choices that were not easy. And I'm going to tell you, if you're really going to serve God, you are gonna have to make some choices that ain't going to be easy. <laughs> okay, right? We were, we were, we were, tell you a quick story. Sometimes they help, sometimes the stories help. In August of uh, 2002, correct? When we were at the hotel, huh? Yeah. When we were in the, in the stairwell of the hotel, uh, of the extended stay. That 2002? Um, earlier in the year of 2002, now you got to remember, we came into this, even though I was a pastor's kid, I knew nothing. I knew the Bible. How many of y'all know the Bible? Y'all do. Y'all may not think you do, but you know enough to find your way around a little bit. But I didn't know the God of the Bible. He and I had nothing in common. Nothing. Because I wasn't living for him. I was living for me. And so, uh, but then he, he, by his great power, you guys know this, he restored our marriage. And when he restored our marriage, man, she and I, you know, even to this day, I mean, this is, this is my friend. I, I mean, beyond, beyond the fact, that, and trust me, she don't laugh at my jokes either, but, but at, least she, at, at least she gets them, okay? She does get them, you know what I'm saying? She, she gets my jokes. So, so with that being said, though, we were, we were faced with some, some decisions. And what we realized, when we got ready to leave our church, we got ready to leave our church in, in North Carolina, who we had spent, I don't know, two Two tours at that church. We, we went there for a season, our first season. We left and we came back to that church and we spent, what, a couple years maybe? You know, and, but, but we still heard God say that he's, there was more for us to do. So when, when the time came for us to, to do God's will, everybody wasn't excited for us. There were people that told, <laughs> y'all can handle this, right? I can, can I go here? 
There was, and people will do this to you. I'm talking about people that sit next to you in church. That's why you can't receive everything from everybody that comes up to you in church. You better be able to recognize whether that's God or whether that's just somebody who had a bad, bad steak dinner the night before. You feeling me? <laughs> Ate too late at night. Anyway, so uh, one of the gentlemen that I was assisting, helping as part of my duties as an elder in that church, I would go pick him up. Okay? So what I had to do is I had to get up early in the morning, right, drive all the way across town, what's the same in North Carolina, go pick him up at his house, which meant I had to leave my family because I didn't want to get my family there before the time. And then I had to go get him, and he was, he was partially, partially an invalid. Uh, he, had used, he had done so many things wrong. I'm not going to be careful what I say because I don't know who's watching this. But he had done so many things wrong in his lifetime and spent so much time in the streets. By the time God got him, his body had broken down on him. So he needed, he needed help. But I'd go do it because I, I just, not because brag on me. Now, I just knew that's what the Lord wanted me to do. So I'd do it. I'd go pick him up. She was okay with it. Go pick him up, put him in the car, and I'd bring him over to the church. And then I'd say, okay, brother, here you go. I'm going to set you up in here. You good? You good? Yep. Okay, now i got to go get my family. Now, here's what I did. I did it so I could still be in church on time. Put, are, are they in? I'm, I'm just like this. If I'm going anywhere, I ain't going late. Y'all ever heard of CP time? <laughs> Some of y'all don't know what that is. You got to ask somebody, okay? That's as far as I'm going with that. I'm go I, look, on time is 10 minutes early. Are you feeling me? So we get there, and, and this brother, I do that faithfully for as long as we did it, and the Lord started talking to us. He's like, come on, come on, y'all, you know. And, you know, I'm not talking about audibly, just in, our, in here. We started talking to our kids about it, you know, talking to our sons and our daughter at the time, and they were all in, like, God wanted us to do more. Well, this brother decided he's going to tell me when I, when I mentioned to him that we were going to Texas, that ain't God. And I said, well, what do you mean that ain't God? How you know? He said, well, I just, I just believe something bad's going to happen to you when you go there. Now, I'm going to tell you something. When we got there, after we'd been there for a while, something bad happened. But it wasn't God. God had nothing to do with it. <clears throat> what happened was an accident that cost my daughter, our daughter, her life. But listen to me well. Hear me now. But I still knew, she knew, that we were supposed to be there. Because the peace of God, the Bible says that surpasses all understanding. It, it garrisons. In other words, it builds a fortress around your mind, as it were. It's almost like the angels of the Lord stand up around you, and they have the swords at the ready, and they're standing there, and they're just daring a devil to try to attack you. When you move into the realm of God, baby, that is, it is for you. And so when we got there, you know, and we were there for a season, our daughter went to be with the Lord. But what I'm telling you is that we were still supposed to be there. Now, what, we, were, we were in the hotel <laughs> before, before, you know, our daughter departed. We were in the hotel and it was, uh, we'd gone to, a, uh, timed our, our arrival so that we could go to a believers convention, Southwest Believers Convention. You've heard, some of you have heard the story before, probably many times. And we're there and... Lynette and I, Pastor Lynette and I do things that other people call foolish. You might call them foolish. We the type that we literally, literally will give our last dollar, will we not, honey? Amen. Now, I tell you, I ain't telling you to give your last dollar. I'm telling you don't eat your, eat your last dollar. If you got a dollar and you have a need, don't spend it at McDonald's $1 value menu. Put it in somebody's hand and say, God bless you. And if they look at it and say, what is this? Take it out of their hand and give it to somebody who knows what to do with it. Anyway, so we're, we're there, and, and we had a great time in the co convention and, and everything. And it was just a great time. We had a great time, man. It was great. It was great. We met Joseph from Israel there. <laughs> we had all this stuff going on, man. The kids were in, in the, in the uh, 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 Super Kid Academy and all this stuff. And she and I are just soaking in the word, soaking in the word. We're sitting way up in the, tear, in the, in the nosebleed section, just soaking in the word, soaking in the word, man, you know. Now, don't know anybody but God. And uh, we had the, the convention came to an end. See, there's a lot of good things that come to an end, but that doesn't mean that God has stopped working in your life. Sometimes there's people that you think are good in your life and they're not really that good. That's why God allows them to end in your life. So we're, 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 we're there and so it's, it's um, what's the Labor Day? 
It's Labor Day holiday. And she and I had taken it. You can close your Bibles. I'm going to finish with this story. She, she, I'm not going to get to the rest of this. I'll, maybe by God's grace, I'll get it next week. We're, we're, we're there. And uh, <laughs> was it, when did you, TJ, the other day? No, that was David. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking about the story. We drove there. When we got there, we didn't have nothing. We had two trailers, two U-Haul trailers, and no place to put the stuff in them, and two cars. So we had to get a storage unit, and we, you know, uh, just before we left, uh, uh, you know, just before we left, we gave everything away. God said, give it away, give it away, give it away. We gave it away. I mean, we had some nice stuff. We had some stuff that was one of a kind of furniture that we had made when we were overseas in Germany and the Philippines. That stuff was nice. Amen. You, you, some of y'all don't like nice stuff. You think you're too holy to have nice stuff. But I'd rather have a dresser that has drawers in it than one that's got them all broken off. Yeah, all right. Y'all get real holy on me. I'll tell you what. You know, if I'm going if I'm going to have shoes, they're going to have heels and toes, not just, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, Smith Wigglesworth said, the moment, the moment, Jesus, that my shoes become run down at the heel, I will stop serving you. That's what Smith Wigglesworth said. All spirits and everything with all that. Anyway, settling for somebody else's junk. I don't want your junk. Anyway, so we're, we're there. And so the week is going good, man. It's going good. We're having a ball. And we get down, and, and I'm as a man, as the, as the husband, you know, and her as well, as the parents, we realized, now our kids weren't babies at that point. They were they was eating, they were some eating jokers then, you know what I'm saying? They had to eat, but Dave, you see what I'm saying? You know, so we, we're there, and so I had, we didn't have, I didn't get a severance from my job because I resigned. You know, they tried to talk me in the stand and said they put me in school and all the stuff they want to do. I just, no, that's not God. So when we got there, the, 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 the hotel that we stayed at, I got online, I booked it online, and that was back, you know, this was back in early 2000s, so it ain't like TripAdvisor and Yelp and all these reviews, you know what I'm talking about. My wife and I, when we're traveling, I make sure I check the people's reviews. I ain't looking at the website, looking at the hotel's website. I want to look at the people's reviews. All right, y'all ain't hearing me. That's okay. Y'all get it. And so we got to that hotel, and it was a dog. It was it not? Do you remember that hotel? <laughs> How bad was that hotel? That hotel was terrible. It was terrible. It had mold. Oh, it was terrible. And I went. I said, look, I ain't scanner. He said, you don't have to. But you ain't getting your money back. And I needed a place to stay. So I repented. Okay, all right, y'all real holy. Anyway, I said, Lord, we got to work this out, Lord. Father, forgive me. I thought, because the picture online was real nice, Crystal, it was super nice. But it was over there off a of Las Vegas trail, if you know what I'm saying about, you know, it was over in a bad neighborhood. I didn't know that at the time. So anyway, we left that hotel. At the end of the conference, we moved into the extended stay over there, over there off of, uh, where's the extended stay over there? Huh? Brian Irvin, thank you. Over off Brian Irvin. Nice neighborhood. All the restaurants, upscale, you know? And so we in that hotel extended stay, and we're there. We ain't got no jobs. <laughs> we ain't got no money, hardly. And we got three kids, and we living in, how many rooms we have? One? Was it one room? One room. It was one room. Yeah. Stand up, son. He, listen, listen, y'all hear me, hear me well now. He, he, he was that big back then. <laughs> I'm serious. He said, no. <laughs> he had just got done with high school. So we're there, and, and so, you know, and we're just learning this faith stuff, man. So I'm, I'm telling y'all, some of y'all feel like you ain't getting it. You're getting it. You're getting it, but you got to put it into practice. So we're there, and, and so we finally found a job at the uh, Fort Worth uh, City School District, right? We were all three of us working at, at temp job. All three of us, okay? He had to go to work. The other two had to go to school. She had to go to work. I had to work. And while I was working, I would take off on my lunch hour to go find a real job. Y'all hear what I'm saying? But all the while, I'm believing God. I'm still in faith. And, you know, we're working at this. I can't remember. It don't matter. But I, we're working at uh, one of those uh, uh, get paid every day places, yeah. right? Who know what I'm talking about? See, some of y'all been too good all y'all life. Labor ready. That's it. Labor ready. We, we're working in labor ready, right? And so, look, at the end of the day, we get them paycheck. I said, give me that money, boy. Give me that money. <laughs> and so I take all that money, and you know what we do? What will we do? Off comes the tithe. Y'all ain't here with y'all. Yeah. See, some of y'all. Uh, and what, did we have a need? You better believe it. But that tithe came off. My wife, what she does, if you ever see, she'll take that tithe. Here's what she do. When she get money, she'll take it, and she'll just fold it up, and she put it right in a 
Can, can I touch your purse? Oh, yeah. Okay, I got to ask permission before I touch this purse. So she'll take, look, you know what I'm talking about. She'll take that, take that money and she'll find the deepest place where can't no grandkids, no husband or no kids find that money. It belongs to God, you hear me? And so she take that money and put her tithes in there, put our tithes in there, and we thank you, praise you God, and we have just enough to be able to make it to the next day and eat and all those things. Now, God told us to go. Huh, like manna, yeah, yeah, just enough for the day. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. And so, so anyway, here, here's what I'm trying to get to. We bumped up against a holiday. Labor Day came. Oh, my God. Labor Day came, ain't nobody working. I can't get the, we can't get the money. You say, well, how come you didn't have more? Because I didn't have no more. And so, so I went up to the front desk, you know, because, because, uh, look, I'm going to say this so everybody get this. Husbands, it's your job to go see that man, not your wife's. Amen. When that bill collector called, here, honey, you talk to him. No, you talk to a man. Ain't no man saying, okay, lady, you talk to a man. You the man. You talk, you know, if you ain't got no man, that's good. I get that. But you talk to him. I went up to that front desk and told that man, I said, man, uh, okay. He said, well, you know, you got to pay by this day. I said, okay, okay. And, and I had to pay it, supposed to pay it on Monday, and I didn't, Monday we weren't working, so I didn't have, I said, well, I'll, I'll do what I can. I said, but I'll, I'll make sure I have it. Now, he, he looked at me, and he knew I had, he was all nice. You know how nice, anybody, see, some of y'all have no concept. Anybody ever stayed in an extended state hotel, motel? Okay, thank you for being honest. It happens, okay? Thank God y'all have never had to do that, but if you do, you've heard this lesson, Okay. So he's all nice. He's so nice. The clerks are all nice and telling us all this good stuff. But when it came time to getting that money, that nice went away. And like, you, you better have that money. Because we got people waiting to come in here. So we went. And so she and I went back to the room. I told her what was going on. She knew what was going on. Stand up with me, honey. Stand up, stand up, stand up. So, so getting to this point. Now, this is the stairwell down the hall. Our kids are in the room. They playing Whatever, you know, they having a good old time. Ain't got no concept. Ain't got no concept of impending eviction. That you ain't, you ain't got enough. You're looking around, it ain't enough. They could care less because God, because mom and dad are in the house. There we go. We walk down. The, we walking down. Look. Remember how, how, how Kathy was walking? Can you walk? We walk. We walking. No, no, no. We walking all slow. We ain't got nowhere to go. So we just walking. We walking down the hallway. We get down into the stairwell where our kids can't hear us. And I said, honey, we need a, we need a miracle. And what we do? We start crying. Y'all can act all spiritual if you want to. I started crying. A grown man crying. I'm like, Lord. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Come on, Jesus. <laughs> I prayed all kinds of prayers that day. But listen to me. We prayed, we came together, then we, then we started hearing the voice of God and we started praying in the Holy Ghost, right? Started praying in the Spirit, wiped them tears away, because it's still got to be about business, okay? And I said, you know what? We need to go take a drive. Because the Lord had said to me, while I was trying, while he was trying to get me to shut up and stop crying, some of y'all cry too much. Just shut up a minute. Some of y'all talk too much. He said, listen, go get in the car. He said, go get in the car and take a drive. And my, me with my lightning fast mind, I'm like, I got to have enough gas to get to work on Tuesday. And he, what he's trying to tell me is you ain't going to have no work on Tuesday because you ain't going to have no place to stay if you don't go get in that car and do what I tell you to do. So we walked back down the hallway. We, we believe in God. We didn't walk back no faster either. <laughs> oh, Jesus. You know how it is. You're in faith, but you're feeling it. Some of y'all are too busy trying to feel it before y'all have the faith. You, you, know, you got to feel faith. So we got in that car. We got in that car. And all the kids got in there. And the kids got in there. And we were there. And we were there. And we were having fun. Our daughter was a, uh, our daughter was a That child, she was a big kid. She was just a big kid. She was continually, did my mic go out? No, it's fine. Okay. Uh, she was a big kid. Uh, she liked to have fun. So she, she's sitting in the car. She's sitting behind me. And I'm, I'm all intent because I'm thinking, Okay, I need some money. I ain't saying it. I'm saying I believe I receive when I pray. And while I'm saying that to myself, and I'm saying it kind of just muffled voice, she back in the back behind me, flicking the back of my ear. You know why? Because she was at rest. 
Some of y'all need to go to God and flip the back of his ear. He's going to be all right with that. All right, y'all too spiritual for me anyway. So I'm driving, I drive up, and I get to this hotel. Remember that dog hotel I told you about? Well, before we left North Carolina, I put that in as a forwarding address. And so I got there, and the Lord said, go back over to that hotel. And I'm like, I don't want to go to that hotel. I don't even want to look at that thing. That thing is a dog. And he said, go to the hotel. Just in here, not, not here, in here. So I had no place else to go. So I drove over to the hotel. We're there. And they all in the car. She's got an idea of what's going on. The kid, they could care less, man. They just, get off me. David, move. You know, TJ, stop it. I want to just say, if you don't stop, I'm going to break your arm off and beat you all with it, you know. <laughs> and uh, so I go inside the hotel, and there's this dude there. And I'm telling you what, if, if, if homeboy wasn't a hippie, I don't know what he was, you know, modern-day hippie. He looked like he just got done smoking some weed. I don't know. But that's how bad he probably did. He's back there, and, and I came in there. I said, listen, I said, I, I just, I don't even know why I'm here because the Lord said it. So I didn't say to him, I'm here because the Lord said so. I said, you know, I came over here. I used to, I stayed here for a week, and I forwarded some mail here. Anything happened to come in? He said, nah, dude. Nah. He said, I, I ain't got nothing for you. I said, well, you didn't even ask my name yet. You know? So I told him, I said, my name is Tommy Roberts, and this is, I get listed the other name. Nah, dude, got nothing for you. And I'm like, what did I do this for? What was the point? So I turn around and get ready to walk. He said, hey, hang, hang on a second. Let me go check in the back. So I'm out uh, here. And, and this is a true story. And I'm standing here. And all of a sudden, while I'm standing there, here comes a roach. Just, you know, you know. I'm serious. I'm not kidding. This is a true story. And roach just doing his, making his way over. And I, huh? Yeah. <laughs> he said the roach gave me $500. I know. I had compassion on the roach. I didn't even want to crush him, man. I was like, look, I stayed here for a week. Let other people deal with you. You know what I'm saying? And so the guy came out of the back, and he said, you know, he said, all I've got, sir, is this letter, but it doesn't have any of the names you listed. He said, it says Christine Roberts, and that was our daughter's middle name. And so uh, he said, yeah. He said, I'm, is that? And then I said, let me see the letter. I looked at the letter, and it had a North Carolina postmark on it, right? And it had my daughter's name on our daughter's name on and I looked at that thing and I didn't I couldn't realize I had no idea what it was because you couldn't tell it was in an envelope uh, uh, not not one of the uh, bill envelopes that has the cellophane on it so I took it out to the car we sat down and I didn't even tell my daughter that I had a letter for her I'm the daddy <laughs> I opened that sucker up see what she was getting because she was only well, how old was she 16 17 she wasn't you know she's 16 at the time 16 year olds don't get to have their own mail not in my house, they don't. <laughs> anyway, so I opened the mail, and I said, here, Dominique. As I opened it, I didn't even look at it. I said, here, Dominique, and I handed it back to her as she was still trying to flick my ear. And she looked at it. She said, oh, Daddy, guess what? And inside was a check for, I don't know, about $300, two something, between two $300. And she said, here, Dad, you can have this. Now, she didn't even know we had a need because I didn't tell her. But that's how we trained her. That's how we raised her. Boy, you know that the spirit of faith filled up that car. Everybody, now, now where they were all having fun, I joined, I, hey, hey, woo, go God, you know. Because, listen, listen, but we didn't quit. We didn't quit. And all we had to do was get through one, listen, one more day. God, thank you, Lord. We made it through one more day. We made it past Labor Day. When we got through that one more day, the rest of it from there on was, it wasn't, it wasn't without battle, but it was smooth sailing. And all you got to do is wake up in the morning and just make it through one more day. You might have, you might have all, seem like all hell is breaking loose against you. And all of the demons of hell are trying to trip you up and try to discourage you. People all in your face telling you this, threatening you. Just make it through one more day. Huh? God hasn't forgotten where you're at. Stand to your feet this morning.